use calculus to determine the coordinates of maximum and minimum of the function f of x is x to the power of 4 minus 2x squared plus 12. So here you've got a function f of x which is equal to x to the power of 4 minus 2x squared plus 12. Now to find the maximum or minimum you have to first find uh, the derivative and set that equal to zero. And then we have to use the test of derivative to decide the maximum or minimum. So first let's find f dash x. Okay, f dash x is a different, so this is nothing but y is equal to f of x. So f dash x, or that is same as writing dy by dx. You drop the power down, that is, 4 drops down and that becomes 4x and decrease the power by 1. So this is 4x cubed minus, drop the power down. So 4, 2 times 2 is 4x to the power 1. I'm not writing. And the derivative of 12 is 0. So now for maximum or minimum, for max, this is local maximum and local minimum. Okay, so I'm not going into local maximum. I'll come to what what do I mean by local maximum later on. It can be a global, there are two maximums that can be, it may, it's not always necessary to have a maximum. So when you're talking about maximum minimum, we're talking about local maximum or minimum. I'll come to that later on. Okay, so there are two types of maximum. One is a, a local maximum and a global maximum. In the same way you can have a local minimum and a global minimum. So I'll come to that later. So for maximum or minimum, your dy by dx, your gradient has to be zero at maximum or minimum. Your gradient is zero. Again, let me explain this. I have done this a many number of times. So if if you graph like this, okay, this is called maximum. At this point, or this is local maximum, so here the gradient is zero. And if your curve goes like this, this is called concave down and this is called concave up. At this point, the gradient is zero. Gradient of the tangent at this point is zero. So I'm going to set this equal to zero. We already found dy by dx, which is 4x cubed minus 4x. So let me change color. So this is 4x cubed minus 4x is equal to zero. So now we have to do a little bit of factorization. So what can you factor out? I can factor out 4x. So we've got x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So this implies this is 4x. How can we factorize this? This is the difference of two squares. So this is x plus 1 times x minus 1 is equal to 0. So setting each of them equal to 0, I hope you can see that x is either 0, x is, say, negative 1, or x is equal to plus 1. So let's write them in a particular order from the descending order. So x is equal to negative 1, x is equal to 0, x is equal to 1. Okay, x is equal to, x is equal to 0, or x is equal to 1. Okay, so let's find the coordinates. Okay, so, uh, so the function is, if you put 0 here, so let you use calculator. So let's go to calculator and table. It's easy. You can do it without the calculator, but I'm a bit lazy now. So x raised to 4 minus 2x squared plus 12. I'll go from set from minus 1 to plus 1. Uh, Step of 1, that's fine. So at minus 1, you've got 11, 0, 12, 1. 11. So we have the coordinates, but now we need to decide whether what's maximum or minimum. So at negative 1, you have the y coordinate is 11. Here the y coordinate is 12, and here your y coordinate is again 11. So from just looking at the coordinates, you can see this is, this seems to be maximum. Okay, so I'll put a question mark. This is, seems to be a minimum. I don't know. I'll have to use maths to prove that these are what they are. It seems to be. 
Okay, now this is called the test of derivative. I'll call this the test of dy by dx. Test of dy by dx or derivative. Now for test of derivative, we are only looking at what's the derivative or what is dy by dx before and after the point. Okay, now if this is a maximum, if this is maximum before the before the maximum, you have you'll if you take an arbitrary point, you'll have a positive gradient, and after that, you'll have a negative gradient. And for minimum, before the minimum, you will have a negative gradient, zero, a positive gradient. You have to show that. Okay, so let's make a table. So x, we are taking only x and divide by dx. We are only taking x and divide by dx. So let us make up a table, a neat table. Okay, so this is, we need six points. So I'll explain. nine points okay what do I mean so let's start with negative one at negative one we know the gradient is zero okay take a point to the left of negative very close to negative one okay if you go to the left of negative one you have negative 1.1 okay and to the right of negative one you have negative 0.9 Okay, so this is one test, so I'll go use my table. Uh, the only thing that I have to do is, I'll, I want, I have to change my uh, setting. Uh, I have to turn the derivative on. I'll turn the derivative on. And I want my range from, uh, say, let me go from minus at a step of 0.1. Okay, so point one. I'll go from minus two, minus two, to plus two, at a step of point one. So I'll explain. So at negative one, so let's go to first negative one. At negative one, your gradient is. Don't look at the y. This is your y coordinate, and this is your derivative. So this is your dy by dx. At negative one, your gradient is zero. So let's write that first. We wrote it. At negative one, your gradient is zero. Okay, to the left of negative one is negative 1.1. What's the gradient? Is negative 0.929. So your gradient is minus here. And to the right, okay, to the right of negative one is negative 0.9, which is positive. Okay, so I always good, uh, draw a, from a negative gradient. From a negative gradient, you're going to zero. And so this is uh, from a negative. So this, sorry, this is not a negative gradient. From a negative gradient, the curve would look like this, isn't it? This is a negative. At this point, at zero, at negative one, you have a gradient of zero. To the left, you have a negative gradient, and to the right, you have a positive gradient. So this is confirmed to be minimum. Okay, so let's now go use a different color. We want zero to the left is negative 0 0.1 and to the right is 0 0.1. Okay, so we need one more line here. Okay, and let me select this, complete the table. So now we'll go to zero. At zero, let's go to zero. At zero, your gradient is zero. So let's at zero, your gradient is zero. Okay. And to the left of zero, which is negative 0 0.1, your gradient is positive. So this is positive. And to the right, which is 0 0.1, it is negative. So from a positive gradient, this is positive gradient, zero in negative gradient. Okay. So this is your zero gradient, at this point your zero gradient, you've got a positive gradient to the left and to the right you have got a negative gradient. So this point is maximum. And finally, we want to go to one. Okay, so let me use this color. So one to the right of one is 1.1 1 .1, and to the left of one, you've got 0 0.9. Okay, again, let us go to one. 
it's a very slow process, but it's very exciting. At 1, you have a gradient of 0. To the left, you have negative gradient. And to the right, so let's see. See, this is at 1, you've got a 0 gradient. To the left of 1, which is 0 0.9, you've got a negative. So from negative, 0, positive. Okay, so here you can see from a negative gradient, you 0. And then you've got a positive gradient. So negative gradient, 0, positive gradient. So again, I'll repeat it. Always good to repeat. So this is a negative gradient. Then at this point, you've got a 0 gradient. And to the right, you've got a positive gradient. So this is minima. Okay, I've drawn the graph just for interest. So if you want to check this, okay, now from these points, you can decide uh, your logically if you look at it this is never going to be negative okay because this is always going to be positive so this is 12 uh, and you put any number here this is always going to be positive this is also always going to be positive okay so to show you the graph graphically so let me go to graph and this is my equation okay and I have set the scale like this. I'll set the scale from, say, minus 2 to plus 2. I'll go at a scale of 1 third. I'll explain why 1 third later on. And from on y minimum, I'm going to put 0. And y maximum, I'm going to put 15. The scale of 3. And this is your graph. Okay. Can you see? This is your graph. And j sol, you can also check it. This is called local max. Now, um, let me talk about local maximum. This is not the absolute maximum. This graph will have other maximums, which is infinite. Okay, but in this range between, say, minus 2, 2 plus 2, this is the local maximum. Okay, you will have this is the local maximum. These two are local and global maximum, because minimum. This is a minimum, so G sol. This graph will never go be below 11. Okay, this too, the graph is never going to go below 11. So you can say, call this the global minimum or the local minimum. Okay, so you can call this specifically the global minimum because your graph is never going to go below 11. But your graph can go beyond uh, 12 because if you go to GSOL maximum, this is not the global maximum it is the local maximum because as you can understand graphically if you go to the left of minus one so let me show you so y calc when x is say minus three uh, the range is not uh, so let me change the scale argument so let me change the scale let me go to 50 okay scale of three g sol y calc when x is minus 2 let's take minus 2 can you see at minus 2 you have a value of 20 which is greater than 12 okay now i've drawn this graph I, what i've done is i have uh, taken the screenshot of my calculator and this is the graph it looks like i have taken at a scale of one third so this point is a very crucial point you will learn this later on when you're le learning second derivative at one third at negative, this is negative one third, sorry. This is negative one third, this is negative two third, and this is negative one. At negative one third, this graph, this much, this much of the graph is called concave up. It's very interesting in calculus to learn these things. So this is, this, for this you have to learn the second derivative. This part of the graph is called concave up, okay? And this is also called concave up. And this part is called concave down. And this is where the curve or the concavity of the graph changes. So from this point at negative one third, your graph changes from concave up to concave down. So from negative one third to positive one third, you it's concave down. And from negative one th from from positive one third, from concave down, it starts becoming concave up. So these are called the points of inflection. You'll learn this later on. If you're learning uh, higher calculus, this, these are, there are two points of inflection. 
this is where your graph changes the shape from concave up to concave down and from concave down to concave up up 